it's so good. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Ruth and JK for their, uh, their sacrifice, for all that they've given. They love the Philippines and they love the world. And most of all, they love Jesus. And Jesus has told them to bring everybody here to pour out his love on you guys. And we just want, I'm here with my friends and with Agape Freedom Fighters, Joanne Moody. So we're here, people have come from all over. We wanna pray for you. We want um, you to be healed and set free and feel the love of Jesus, amen? Okay, so Ruth is my dear friend and she met Nancy in the dump when they were uh, loving on people in the dump and I met Nancy in the hood. So the Lord has an amazing way of connecting us. We are all family, you guys. Even though we look a little different and meet, we may sound a little different, we all have the same father. And we're family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ gathered together here to lift him up and to make him known. So, yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Okay, you guys, I'm going to tell you my story, and it's a doozy. So put your seatbelts on. It's a story about the love of Jesus Christ. And no matter where you've been or what you've done or how you were raised, Jesus is the answer, and Jesus is enough to heal every disease and to set every captive free and to change your mourning into dancing and your ashes into beauty. So I'm, you know, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, right? And we are overcomers by our testimony in the blood of the lamb. So as my testimony is released, you can reach out and grab onto this testimony for yourselves and for your loved ones. So I encourage you, be expectant. So Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I just thank you right now that you're here. I thank you that every single person here has been ordained to be here since before the foundations of the earth. That you've called them, that you have appointed them because you have something for them today. So Father, I just ask for the effects of your broken body to be unhindered in this place right now. And even as I'm speaking, God, I ask for, for bodies to be healed, for demons to go, for hope to arise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Okay, so I was born in uh, Los Angeles in Southern California back in the day. And in those days, um, I was born into a really good family. I was raised well. I had pretty much everything that I needed in the natural realm. But what we didn't have in the house was Jesus because I was born and raised Jewish. I was born and raised from another faith. So. I went to a good school, and um, everything was good on the outside. But on the inside, there was a lot of problems. My mother was an alcoholic, and um, she was not there for us children. She was there physically, but she wasn't available to us emotionally. And I had an older sister that was 10 years older than me. And she began when I was about 16 years old, 15, 16 years old. She was 26 years old. And she started bringing her boyfriends home. And one of her boyfriends was a, a marijuana dealer. We lived in Southern California. And he was taking marijuana over the border of Mexico. That was her first husband. He got arrested and was in jail in Mexico, and then she divorced him and got another husband. He was Peruvian. So she moved down to South America and began bringing large amounts of cocaine into the house. 
So from a very young age, I started doing lots of drugs. I did not know better. Nobody told me that when I opened that door, that the enemy would come in and take over my life. So I started doing drugs. We started partying. And um, I thought things started getting really difficult for me in California. And people started noticing that my behavior was very odd. So I decided I was going to move down to South America with my sister. She was living in Venezuela at that time. So I moved to Venezuela, and how many know that's not a good place for a coke addict because there's lots of drugs in South America. There's lots of drugs everywhere. So I started doing a lot more cocaine, and I ended up getting married. I married a, a lawyer. He had no idea that I was doing drugs. I hid it from him. I had a secret life. A couple years go by and he found out that I was doing drugs. So I decided, well, I'll have a baby and a baby will fix it. So I had my first son and after I had my son, I ended up going right back to drugs and alcohol because a baby cannot fix your problems. A child cannot fix your problems. So after, you know, the baby having my son didn't help me and I went right back to drugs, I started looking for help in all the wrong places. I started going to doctors, I went to psychiatrists, I went to psychologists, I went to acupuncturists, I went to uh, doctors, I went to everywhere to try and get help. And nothing worked. I did not want to be doing drugs at this point, but I could not stop. After I went to the doctors, my my husband said, I think you need to go to rehab. I started going to the best rehabilitation centers in the world. I went to Betty Ford, Alina Lodge. Do you guys have that here? Do you guys have rehab centers here? I started going from rehab to rehab. My family spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to get me to stop doing drugs. And the minute I left the rehabilitation center, I was usually in the hood somewhere getting high. I wouldn't even make it on the plane because I was in complete bondage. And nothing that I did in the natural was able to help me. Went from rehab to rehab, it didn't work. Living in South America, so my husband goes, we better move you back to the States. So I went back to Florida, got a house, very nice house, everything I needed again in the natural, but still, I wasn't satisfied. Because we are not satisfied in the natural realm. Got to Florida, and there are police in Florida, which, you know, there's not a lot of police in South America, and if you do get pulled over in South America, you can just pay them off. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Corrupt policemen? But in the States, it's a little different, because when you get arrested in the States, they take you to jail, which didn't go over really big for my family. They didn't like that too much. So at that point, I start getting arrested. Um, uh, Who's back there? Can you guys pull up some of the pictures that I gave you? Okay, that anger much? Does anybody think that maybe they might have a bit of anger? But an anger problem? Go ahead to the next one. There, that's, all of these guys are mug shots. I was arrested over and over again and put in jail. Go ahead, go to the next one. There, I don't know what was going on there. I'm not sure. But we see that I was completely uh, possessed. Go ahead to the next one. Yeah, so I was um, self-mutilating myself at that point. 
I had picked myself raw and um, you're still angry, as you can see. Very, very angry because <laughs> life was not good. Go to the next one. Yeah. So this gives you an idea of, I think there might be one more. Or one more. Go to the next one. Anyway, you guys get the picture. I got to Florida, and after I got arrested, my husband divorced me and took, at that time, I had two children. And when, after I lost my children, I absolutely lost my mind. And the enemy came in like a flood. I was totally dominated by the devil. I could not, if I wanted to go home, I could not go home. I did not want to go and use drugs anymore. I did not want to go uh, and lose my children. But I had no ability to say no. So the last time I got arrested, I'm in jail, and um, my family was really trying to help me, so they sent the rabbis to pray for me, and the rabbis to give me food, and, and I was trying, I, I was crying out to God, I said, God, I need you, I need help, but I was not, I was not praying to Jesus, I was praying to God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when I was in jail, I started arguing with the guard because you can see I had a little bit of an anger problem and I was fighting with the guard. So I got thrown in solitary confinement for two weeks. Anybody ever been thrown in solitary confinement or is it only me that's been thrown in solitary? You know what you get in solitary confinement, people? You get one thing. You get a Bible. So while I'm in solitary confinement, because I was Jewish, I tore out the New Testament. And I'm in solitary confinement reading the Old Testament because I like to read. You only get one thing in there. You don't get TV. You don't get to call your family. Not that anybody was talking to me anyway because I was shot out. So I'm in solitary confinement and the door swings open and a girl comes in and she laid down next to me and my Bible was laying on the floor and she said, you tore up your Bible. God's going to be angry at you. And I said, God's already angry at me, so don't worry about it. Just go to sleep and mind your own business. But when she got up and left, and when I got up, she had left her Bible and taken my Bible. So during that two weeks in solitary confinement, Jesus revealed himself to me. I began reading, yeah, I began reading about the blood of the lamb. I began reading when you plead the blood of the lamb over the lentils of your doorpost, the plague of death will pass over you. And I, and I began to read, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And then I'm like, Lord, what's the truth? Jesus said, I am the truth. I'm the way and I'm the life. So I said, Jesus, if you're real, I need you to come into my heart. And so I laid down on my cot. And in that moment, I was stuck. I was stuck to my bed and I could not move. And Jesus took me up. I don't know if I was, you know the scripture that says, I don't know if you're in my body or out of my body. Jesus took me up and he delivered me. Something went out of me and something went in me. And in that moment, I was set completely free from 20 years of hardcore addiction. Jesus comes to bind up the brokenhearted and set the captives free. It does not matter who you are or what you've done. He's no respecter of persons. He's, you guys, he's no respecter of persons. And God has healing and deliverance in this place for each and every one of you. But the reason 
He, he lo- it's because of his love. But he doesn't heal you just for you. He takes your healing and turns you into healers. He takes your deliverance and turns you into deliverers. He takes what he restores so you can be so you can be ministers of reconciliation. With Agape Freedom Fighters, we go all over the world equipping the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry. There's no difference between you and any of us. Each of you are powerful. Each of you have Holy Spirit in you and are called to transform this nation. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're worthy in this place. You are worthy in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. After I got out of jail, I ended up going into a discipleship program. You know, the word says the body of Christ is held together by ligaments and sinews. And we need each other. We need each other. The body of Christ, I don't care where you are in the world. When he puts the lonely in families, we're family. We get to come in here and we see Papa Mel. He's, he's, he's got sons and daughters all over the world. He sowed into my life years ago and encouraged me to step out and do what God has called me to do. We have our brothers and sisters. That's why JK and Ruth are here. They want you to know that you're sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And no evil formed against you can prosper. And he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. There's an army rising up and you guys are the army. You guys are the army. Jesus puts us on like gloves and wears us to reveal himself in the world. There's a sick and dying world out there that needs to know the love of Jesus Christ. And if we don't go out and tell them, who's going to go? Who's going to go? I got to tell you guys a story. Before I went to jail, I was walking the streets. I would do anything that it took to get my next fix, to get my next drug. And I was driving home and I pulled into a gas station and I ran out of gas. And so I'm looking for somebody to get money from. And a guy pulls up and I see him. He's got black pants on and he's got a black shirt. It's early Sunday morning. And I said, okay, there's my guy. I'm going to hit him up for some money. Are you guys with me? Okay. I said, I'm going to ask this guy for some money to put some gas in my tank. So I get out of my car and I go walking up. I went, hey, how's it going? He said, hello. I said, you know, I ran out of gas. I really need some money so I can get home. I said, I see you've been out all night by the way you're dressed in a black shirt and black pants. And he looked at me, he said, no. He said, I'm the worship leader at our church. And I was like, oh, rats. Oh, no. I picked the wrong guy. And he said, and if you want, he goes, I'm on my way to church. He said, if you want to go to church with me, I'll take you. I'm like, eh, no, mm -mm, not right now. Just money. Just give me some money. And he said, you know what? He said, I'm going to go inside and I'm going to put some money so you can get some gas. He goes, but I need you to know one thing. He said, that void that you're trying to fill is a God-shaped void. And if you only knew how beautiful you are, if you only knew that God loves you and he has a plan and a purpose for your life, for good and not for evil. And he said, and I'm going to pray for you. But I had never known the Lord. Nobody had ever spoke words like that to me. And in that moment, 
life. Life came into me. Life came into my spirit. And from that day forth, whenever I went to get high, it was never the same. Because I knew that, that something wasn't working, that something wasn't satisfying that need. You guys, there's no such thing as a powerful, silent Christian. We have to open our mouths. We have to encourage one another. We have to, I don't care what the people look like on the street because the word says we judge not by our eyes. You know, that man, he spoke life over me. He spoke something that had never been spoke over me. I did not know that God had a plan and purpose for my life. I did not know that I was the beloved. I did not know that no matter what I did, that nothing could separate me from the love of God. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's an army rising up. This is a, we're going into a new season, people. And if the call is all hands on deck, all hands on deck. It doesn't matter what a person looks like. When we, drove, we were driving around the city and we saw the homeless population laying on the street. And I tell you, I was no different than those people laying on the street. You see by my pictures. But somebody reached out to me. Somebody opened their mouth. They didn't tell me, oh, you know, you're a drug addict. You look terrible. It's like, yeah, I got that. I know that. I know that I look terrible. I know that I'm not well. What I don't know is that I've been created in his image. I didn't know that I have a God that loves me. And he waits on high to bless me and to heal me and to set me free. So right now, Father, I just, I thank you. I thank you that you're here right now. I thank you that you're here right now to break every chain of bondage. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what your kids are going through. I don't care what the demons are that you're battling. Jesus is bigger. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. If you're sick, sickness must bow to God who's your healer. If you're in lack, Lack must bow to God, your provider. Jesus. If you're hopeless, look to the God of hope. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. My prayer for you guys, part of my process coming out of this thing was I had to renew my mind. I had to take every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. Every high and lofty thing that exalts itself. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you show your sons and daughters what thoughts they're having that don't line up with kingdom God. And I ask right now that by the power of your Holy Spirit, throughout this day, God, that you continue to release your truth, God, and replace the lies, Father. I have a scripture I want to read out of Ephesians 
For you are his workmanship, his own master work. You guys are his workmanship, his own master work. He formed you in your mother's womb. He knit you together. I don't care what the world says about you. I don't care what circumstances say. That does not dictate us because we no longer, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We live in the kingdom and of the increase of his government, there is no end, people. We need to set our sights on things above. You are his workmanship, his own master work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and ready to be used for good works, which God has prepared for us so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us since before the foundations of the earth. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to see Jesus step in to the Philippines? You know how he steps in? Through us. So we just say freedom right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, freedom to be who God has called you to be. Freedom for him, him to reveal himself through you. Each of us is a precious part of his body. And we need each other. We need your supply. It's not a spectator sport, guys. It's for all of us to enter into the game. And it's fun. Come on, you guys. Hallelujah. Come on. Father, we thank you for your fire in this place. We thank you for your fire that is marking and sealing hearts for such a time as this. To speak life. To raise the dead. I don't care if they're spiritually dead or physically dead. It is no longer I that live, but he lives in us to raise up dead things. You're ambassadors of Christ. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in this place, God. I thank you for their hunger. I thank you, God, that the hungry always get fed. So, Father, gosh, <laughs> We look to you. You are the all-sufficient one. You are everything, the alpha and the omega. So, God, I ask right now that you seal each and every one of my brothers and sisters in this place and that you ignite them. That you ignite them. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Remember, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Nothing is bigger than Jesus Christ. Nothing. Keep your eyes set on him, on things above. He will never fail you. He will never leave you. And he waits to pour out his love upon each and every one of you. So be encouraged by this testimony. Nothing is bigger than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the honor. Thank you, God. Come on. What's next? What are we doing? You guys, we have a whole prayer team that came. And we don't, we don't want to send out wounded warriors, okay? And we're first on the list. There's no shame. There's no guilt. He wants to transform you 
by the renewing of your mind. We don't want you to come here and have, you know, a, 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 an encounter with God and then go home and things be the same. It's not about a public touch. A public touch is great. But we want you to, to encourage you to enter into an intimate place with the lover of your soul. That you would go home and, and just spend time with him. Look around, meet somebody. We don't, we're, we don't, you know, we don't, if there's no need for us to be lonely. We want to pray for each other. Introduce yourself to somebody. Get to know your brothers and sisters in Christ. Go out to lunch. Love on those around you. We need each other, you guys. We need each other. And most of all, we need him. We need him. I thank you, God, that even right now, bodies are being healed. I thank you right now that sick minds are being restored. I thank you, God, that you're releasing peace. I thank you, God, that in you, we do not have a spirit of fear. Everybody say, I do not have a spirit of fear, but of power love and a sound mind thank you lord you guys thank you so much for letting me share you guys are amazing bless you